So we want to talk about what this is all about. Right? Yeah, I think um, I think the listeners should really kind of get a grasp on what you plan to do because I know what you plan to do. I think it's brilliant, but I think the people <laughs> need to know what's coming because I, for one, I'm super excited about it. Yeah. So it, what can we expect from this thing? This thing is going to be, you know, something that's been brewing for years and years and years. Yeah. Because when I got into this industry, I still always tell people, back in 2009, 2010, I was like, I wasn't even sure I wanted to stay in the mortgage industry. Yeah. But it was when I was about a year into it, and I was like, there is a lot of bums, a lot of lies a lot of misconceptions yep. and people are getting a disservice in the mortgage and real estate industry. And I still didn't even know a lot. Like I still was like only a year in, so I didn't even know what a lot of loan programs meant. Yeah. But I was like, I was drawn in by clients of mine and realtors that were like telling me these horror stories. And I was like, that's bullshit. Right. So it like made me develop a passion. I didn't just like start in the mortgage industry and look at me, I'm passionate about it. I, you you have to you have to be in something and sacrifice and put hours and months and years until you you get a passion for it right and so when I was like building myself into the mortgage industry and figuring out if it was still right for me I was like oh my gosh I gotta stay in here like I gotta stay right here even though I didn't like half of what I was doing yeah it's not an you easy know, the job paperwork the long hours and I was like but these people need it they need it and then as the years went on, it was like, oh, maybe one day a podcast would be cool, right? Yeah. And then now it's like, okay, the time's right. The time's right because more than ever right now, with the amount of people that flooded into this industry, there's a ton, ton of shitty ones and a ton of good ones. And I want to divide that and I want the bad ones to go away because they have people's money on the line. Yeah. And they trust them to go, hey, what should I do? I've never bought a house before. So this podcast is going to embody the truth to get the lies out there and to give people the advice and to make people's stress levels before they even start the loan process. And they don't even have to be first-time home buyers, right? Right. I hope a lot of people that you know tune into this um, are just like, man, home buying kind of freaks me out or, you know, I don't want to make a mistake. I don't know who to call first. I want this podcast to be the, the, the trust, the heartbeat of home buying in the country. This is the source. If you want to start somewhere or get good information, um, this is where you start. You start to listen, watch, and get yourself educated. Yeah. And yeah. after that, then your stress level will drop a little bit. And before you even try to get pre-approved or searching for homes online, you're like, I'm ready. Right. You know as well as I do, I think that there's just a huge lack of education around buying a house. You can talk about first-time home buyers, but even think about people that you've done, you know, they bought two houses. They don't even know what they did. They're just like, yeah, I just have a house. I made a payment. It is what yeah. it is. But they yeah. don't know, like, what happened, right? So there's a lot of misconceptions out there. I think you've probably seen, well, we always think you've seen them all, but as, as every day goes by, you find something new. Mm -hmm. But what are some of the biggest things that like, you really want to get these people to understand so that they can look for this when they are making the move to buy a new house or even simply, honestly, refinancing? I don't think a lot of people know what that's all about either. Right. I mean, that's a fully loaded question with a lot of details, but I think there's a couple big takeaways and yeah. I want people to know the biggest thing I want people to know is who to pick and why so when it comes to the real estate agent and the lender and the insurance agent that yep. you decide to go into business with it's not about whose name is on the listing or who's got the cheapest rate right it's not about just go to your local bank because all those things and reasons how people have bought a house and oh, I just did that I want them to rethink how people do business in this line of work because um, the most, the craziest horror stories and misconceptions you hear are from bad advice, people that are licensed in the industry that literally didn't take it seriously and they're giving bad advice. They're saying, oh, you don't need a home inspection. It's going to be fine. Right. It's like, that realtor has been around for five years and is saying shit like that? Yeah. Or, oh, I just went to my bank and I don't know, I just got some loan. And I'm like, 
that's all you did? Or they just went there and got told they can't get a loan, but it was only one option, you know? Yeah. I mentioned a loan. You didn't qualify. Yep. But there's so many other options. So many. And a lot of banks cherry pick. A lot of banks go, we just really kind of do this and come on in and get you out the door. They don't really care about the person. So it's like, I want people to not worry about, did I get the cheapest rate? Mm -hmm. And did I just, uh, you know, pick whoever? I want people to know before they get into it how to proactively set up your team. Yeah. I want people to know it matters. I want people to know it's kind of like, who, who's your dentist? Who's your lawyer? Right. Who's your chiropractor? If those people mean something to you, so should your realtor and so should your lender. But there's something that I've still never put my finger on in this industry and people in the financial world whether it's who you bank with, mm -hmm. who your insurance is with, who you did your mortgage with, and who your realtor is, a lot of people, when I ask them these questions, they're like, oh, I don't really, I don't know. Oh, my bank is, uh, what's, honey, what's it again? I'm right. like, you have no idea who your lender was or who your insurance, like insurance, that one, that's a big one too. And it's like, people sh need to take it seriously. Because as this podcast is gonna be going on and the episodes we throw out there, I'm going to give people the raw, the uncut, the shit people don't want to say yeah. because they're afraid to say something. I'm going to say it. I'm going to call out people that should be called out. I'm going to talk about topics that are like borderline, should you say it, should you not? <laughs> I'm just going to say it. I want the people to, to decide, oh, oh, wow, glad he said that. Yeah. Because it's not fair for people to know, uh, to not know stuff that, is going to cost them thousands of dollars. And they don't even know it, to be honest, until it's too late. Correct. This one right here. Ah, oh, that guy a real cheap interest rate. And then I'm like, well, what did you get quoted? Ah, oh, like this, whatever. And I'm like, did you look at the fees? Right. That's a big one. They're stuck on the rate when it's like, well, look at the fees they're charging you. Did you know that you can go somewhere else that doesn't just give you one rate, one set of fees? that can give you a few pricing options and even a little bit higher rate actually saves you more in the long run. It's like, what do you mean? Well, that had eight grand more on closing costs. Yeah. My rate's only 12 bucks more a month on the rate, but our fees are half. That'll take you nine years to pay back the difference. You don't even be in this house for nine years. Yeah. And the client's home. like, oh my gosh, I would have never thought about it. Good thing your realtor sent you over, you know, and it's like, that's the stuff we're gonna talk about. Yeah, I'm excited about that because we've talked off air a lot about all that stuff. I think that there's not a lot of people out there saying it and I'm excited that you're gonna be the one that kind of leads that pack <laughs> because I do think yeah. you got a lot. I mean, we've talked about a lot of stuff so I know that there's knowledge out there. Yeah. Because we talk to people all the time that you brought up a great point there with the interest rate, like the pricing options. People just think there's one rate. What are rates today? Mm -hmm. But they they don't know about buy downs. They don't yep. know about even increasing your rate because let's mm -hmm. say you you know you're a couple grand short on your closing costs, or you want to save a little bit on your closing costs. At a little bit of a bump in the rate doesn't mm -hmm. affect the payment a whole lot, but saves you thousands on your fees. Yep. And they don't even know that's an option yep. because you're right. They're so caught on lowest rate, lowest rate, lowest rate. Yep. And then they get blinded. Yep, by uh, everything else in the process. And stuff like appraisals and inspections, which it's a part of the mortgage process, but a lot of people don't know, oh, is that my inspection? Or uh, no, it's not your inspection. Yeah. Oh, it, I want people to know, should you buy that house? Whereas a lot of realtors and lenders want to just go, oh, get, go, 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 go. <laughs> yeah. They want to get a commission check. Yep. You know, they just want to close it. And then the, the poor client, that I get some calls some days, they're like, I shouldn't have bought this house and I'm looking at refinancing. I'm like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And then they tell me some of these crazy stories about, well, the realtor said it should be fine and the lender didn't bring it up and mm -hmm. we had this go wrong with the house and this go wrong with the house. And so I'm gonna actually like tell stories. Yeah. I'm gonna give actual examples without mentioning names and then people are gonna be blown away because most people think a loan's a loan, a realtor's a realtor, a bank is a bank, and wow, I just got a house. Mm -hmm. That is not what is it, that's not what it is. It's and, not. And there's a lot of like a, you know, there's a bad stigma around like, well, buying a house is so scary and, and all these bad experiences. A lot of them, if you agree with this, stem from who they chose to do the business with. That's it. Which is why you're here to kind of put that out there to yeah. really kind of, I mean, 
chose the title Wake Up Real Estate. That was a pretty bold <laughs> title, you know? It was. But you said it in your Instagram video about people, you know, your whole goal is to wake people up, literally. That's why the name is that. Yep. And I think that you're onto something with that big time. You know, and Wake Up Real Estate is not to make friends in the industry. Wake Up Real Estate is to make friends out in the public. Yeah. I want people to know that I got your back. I got your back. And if some people don't like it, the people that don't like what we're going to talk about are the people that should not be in this industry, <laughs> period. Yeah. And every time I hear stories about them or this or that, I'm going to call it out on here. Not going to mention names, but I am going to say, did you know about this? Did right. you know that this is not being told to you because of, and you know what most of the time what the because of answer is? Paychecks. Yep. And that's not fair. The consumer deserves way more than that. Exactly. They don't know any better about that. You yep. know? The loan officer yep. is the one that can look at the product. And I think one of the things that you do really well at and what you'll kind of break down is a lot of times you don't get a client in the door and then say like, oh, well, here's, here's a really good product. Here's a really good product. You kind of talk to them first. I've heard you on the phone hours on end about you kind of figure out their situation mm -hmm. because what they don't know is all the back end options, mm -hmm. but you do. So you can get their situation and then you can find the product that caters to what they don't even know they need. Yep. You know, they don't yep. come to you knowing like, I need to go conventional with single pigs, that, all that stuff. They don't know about that. Yep. But if you just listen to their story for 10, 15 minutes, you can pinpoint a product that they don't even know exists. Exactly. And I don't think a lot of people do that. And it's simple as this. It's like buying a home, getting your mortgage loan is broke down in a couple basic processes your pre-approval process, which should be taken sacredly. Yeah. Where you go over credit, income, debt to income, assets, and what's your best loan option. Most banks and credit unions and mortgage companies, they uh, some of the stories I get because people are shopping and they'll go to me for a second opinion or whatever, they're like, uh, no, I didn't even really talk to anybody. They just sent me a few emails. Yeah. I was like, well, what did they send you for options? Uh, just, I don't know, like think conventional or something. And I'm like, you think and you have no idea and that's the place that wants to get your business, blows my mind. It's the pre-approval process, it's the house hunting process, and then it's the um, going under contract, inspection, and then the loan process. Yeah. And all those pieces, there's big bullet points in there that when you have a good lender and a good realtor, they will educate you, prep you, talk to you about stuff. So at the end of the transaction, you work with somebody like me and our team, you're gonna be like, wow, they taught me so much. Yeah. Versus when places go, I just, I don't even know what happened. I just closed. Yep. <sighs> I feel so sorry for that person, because that's not the way it should be. And they always joke about it too at closing. Oh, just sign my life away. Yeah. But they don't know what they just signed. <laughs> They're just like, I think I gotta make this payment at I this know. time. Oh. But yeah, that's a huge thing, because you know all the key points and the bullet points of, you've been in the industry long enough to see how much all these milestones you're talking about yep. make or break that customer experience. 100%. It all comes down to those few things. The process is a long process, which is funny because you know you can go buy a car in like half hour. But you buy a house, it could take up to two months. Yep. But that's the thing, and I don't know that a lot of people realize the weight of each of those milestones. 100%. So that's kind of what you want to put out there too, right, is to educate them on their role mm -hmm. because they have so much control over how the process goes. They do. If you have a nightmare process, it's because you didn't really know what was going on. That, which brings up a good point, communication. Yes. It doesn't matter, relationships, buying a house, um, running a business, communication, that word. I know a lot of people like hear that and they're like, oh, I know, I get it. No. Like literally, who you pick for a realtor and a lender should matter. Because let's say you pick somebody and you're like, oh, that should work. But you don't know, do they text? Right. Are they available at, on the weekends? Do they, uh, are they, uh, I don't know, uh, are they quick at responding? Do they take a day? But you just think that's who you should go with, or but you have no rhyme or reason. You should literally, as a consumer, as a home buyer, you should go, you know what? Wow, that makes sense. Because I communicate like this. My work schedule's like this. Yeah. You know, what if I pick this lender versus this lender, but this lender is gonna be available seven days a week. He's got a team behind him. And if I text, they'll text back. And if I need something, um, I know in a pinch, night before closing, they'll answer my questions even though it's eight o'clock at night. 
if you don't have that and you picked something different, which is the opposite, which I know you, you can assume what the opposite would treat you like. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got the cheapest rate. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> you saved 10 bucks a month to work with a turd that literally barely communicated with you and only was doing emailing and said, I don't give out my personal cell. I don't do text message. And then cuts it off right at five. Okay. Well, okay. Let me ask you this. What about your furniture? What about your clothes you wear? What about the food that you eat? It's the same thing. What's 10, 20 bucks uh, Oatia? Oatia, that you got educated, didn't buy a crappy house, bought a good one in a good neighborhood, got educated, know the process, know what home insurance includes, and you were with a good team, that should be worth just a little bit more, in my yeah, opinion. I agree. Some people disagree, some people agree. I want to work with the people that agree with that. You always bring up a good example. You know, there's other aspects of your life. Do you not pay a little bit more knowing that you're going to get better service? Because you've had a bad experience with somebody else. Maybe it was they saved you a hundred bucks. Let's just say to fix your vehicle. Saved you a hundred bucks, but it, every day they're like, yeah, it should be done Thursday. Then they call you Thursday. Yeah, it should be done Friday. Mm -hmm. Call you Friday. Uh, we need it over the weekend. Versus you go to this other company, pay a little bit more, and they say, it'll be ready Thursday morning at 8 a.m. You show up at 8, they hand you the keys, you're out. Is that not worth a little bit more of your money? Way more. I think that gets lost in the transaction, too. I got a funny example. It's like this, right? It's like, would you just pick the cheapest brain surgeon? <laughs> would you check, Would you pick the cheapest clinic uh, for your kids? It saves you 10 bucks because the office visit's a little cheaper, but they're not giving your kids the right medicine? Well, okay. So I know we're not dealing with your health, but I know as well as you do that stress in life has a big factor on your health and you picking somebody or picking a you know somebody in the real estate or mortgage industry that gives you a bad advice or bad experience and now you're stuck with a house that has all kinds of issues and now you own it and now you can't afford it and now you go into foreclosure you don't think that's going to affect your how your health yeah oh, you want to talk about some issues in life you buy the wrong house or you pick the wrong lender and realize the loan program you got into and now you're in a financial mess and you overpaid for this or overpaid for that, I'm telling you, you look back that you look back on that in life and if you didn't do the right thing, that could be years and years of, of, of ripple effect yeah. on, on your life, not only your finances, which then could affect your, your mental state, which then could affect your relationship with your spouse. And then now you didn't even realize that the bad decision on a house or the bad decision on a mortgage loan or a build or something that went wrong. Let's not talk, let's talk about this. Let's talk about um, some of these bad lenders out there that pre-approve people, get people all excited, get them out shopping at homes, didn't double check and didn't do a good job at a pre-approval because people don't know that a pre-approval is just a piece of paper. Yep. A pre-approval is not your loan is good. So oh, I'm already pre-approved. Are you? Do you know it for sure? Do you know what pre means? That means it's not approved yet. <laughs> yes. Approved is keys are in your hand and the house is yours. So let's talk about these lenders out there and you can find it all online that all these stories of people that got pre-approved, got the house under contract, paid for a home inspection, two, three weeks into the process, told their kids about the house, showed the house to their kids. They get a week before closing and the lender goes, oh, sorry, your loan's not going to go through. How's oh, that make you feel? How's that, how's that now? Happens every single day. Google it. Look it up. It's, and because there's all kinds of stuff with lenders that pre-approval letters protect them because clients could quit their job. Yep. Clients could give misinformation. But if you gave good information and that lender is just the hook and book type lender, which are a lot of these online lenders, they'll literally just go next, next, next. They don't care about you. They never have to see you. They never have to meet you. They never have to see you out at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. And then if they tell you whatever, some of them just send an email. Sorry, your loan's not going through. You booked a U-Haul, you told all your friends about it, you showed pictures to your kids, and then now just because you think you got a cheaper rate? Yeah. And then what's the craziest thing about all that 
is a lot of those clients I've heard and sometimes they'll call me last minute and we can get them a loan and we can get them into a house just maybe not that one right their price point was jacked up a little bit or maybe the program that the other place told them no we just have another one that could get them into the house mm -hmm. a government product but um, it's gonna back up closing now because I just got the file just right now and they want to close tomorrow it's like no right we'll need about two weeks to close that but like that in itself I mean people got to think about that man they do they do <laughs> you brought up a good point too that I kind of want to touch on the different product and as and you know as well as I do all these other lenders and whatnot mm -hmm. there's the standard guidelines and then there's overlays right mm. and that's where I think you were just kind of getting on a little bit is that particular lender maybe you can get that loan with a credit score of 620 mm -hmm. but maybe that lender is only comfortable going to 660 or 680 mm -hmm. and you could get denied and told you know that this just doesn't work for you yep and then you're just so defeated and they go home and they're like well i guess that's over with yeah but then they call a guy like you and you're like yeah you're good and they're like what are you talking about i just got told literally an hour ago i'm not good mm-hmm so I don't know that people really know a lot about that either. Right. And I think that's kind of what you, you can kind of put that out there and let people know that there's more to this. And you're talking about pre-approvals too. They're only, those initial pre-approvals are only as good as the info you put in. That's it. And if you don't ask the right questions. Yep. Which you've learned <laughs> over your decade plus in the industry, there's some specific mm -hmm. questions that can make or break a deal that don't get asked until it's too late yep and i know that you you've done yeah. a good job at yeah. tuning, <laughs> tuning your calls a little bit to the, cater to those yeah the basic breakdown of overlays is this not all lenders are created equal yeah they're not because uh you got your banks credit unions and mortgage companies and in the mortgage industry which is its own separate industry it's mm -hmm. not the banking world that's its own separate the mortgage world has your main conforming loan products in the country conventional fha va USDA. Yep. Those are the four big ones. They have their set of guidelines. FHA handbooks like 2,000 pages, conventional is like 1,000. It's got its own set of guidelines. Lenders that send their loans um, to those loan programs, um, whether they service the loan but they close and book the loan, they can either follow just their guidelines or then they can set their own on top of those. Right. Those are called overlays. And a lot of banks, your big banks, right, your big dogs, they all have overlays because they service their own loans. So a lot of people think when doing a mortgage loan, I went to my bank and they got me a good deal, but they put them through the ringer and didn't tell them about some stuff is because that bank has their overlays on top of FHA or on top of VA mm -hmm. and put them through all kinds of unnecessary stuff, unnecessary fees but it's because they don't want to do certain types of loans because they deem them risky or they don't want them on their books whereas half the world has overlays the other half just go off of just the industry guidelines of those four programs right that's the lender you want to find because it's going to be less paperwork for you it's going to be easier to close it's going to be faster to close your loan and then literally if the loan can close and you do qualify you will you'll get the house right and a good lender can run right through that and tell you that. So I advise people to ask, hey, do you have overlays? And and see what their response is. Yeah. And if their response is weird, you should you should be thinking about some looking around. Yeah, there's options out there and I think the people just need to be more aware of that. Yeah. Because so many people get defeated and it takes them years to then finally get the confidence to try again. Yep when they could have initially gotten the house yeah. and i know you've had a lot of clients that have yeah. been in that exact situation yeah and that's why you built you know a, a good reputation of that and i know that a lot of people do come to you for second opinions because they you put out so much content which is this is just another avenue of getting that content out which is great mm -hmm. it's needed but you put out so much content that it's just created this level of education that these people never had and they've never had an avenue to just the black and white truth yep and that's what I'm excited for you to kind of blast out in the world. It's kind of exciting. <laughs> so how we're going to wake up the real estate world, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I like to uh, kind of always transition at the end. And I want to talk about something. Because I think these talks, as much as we're going to talk about lending and mortgage and real estate, yeah. is, uh, you know, we got to give some people also a little bit of, uh, you know, 
mindset advice. Yes. A little bit of a, you know, outside of the box ways of thinking because I didn't get to this point and nobody that, you know, is happy, has joy and is successful in life, get anywhere in life without having a set special kind of mindset and that are working on themselves. So we were talking uh, us in the office a few days ago about um, I got I got this phrase coined in my head and it's so funny. I was in college and I was uh, in the wrestling locker room and my head coach at the time, I'll never forget it, we're standing there. We weren't even talking and he just looks at me and he goes, I don't listen to what people say. I watch what people do. That's good. And at the time, I was like, whatever. But like a couple years later, and I was like, I, it just, it hit me. And I was like, when he said that, and it was like just a perfect time for me to like remember that. And we were talking about how, you know, getting to certain levels in life, it comes from hours and hours of putting in the work and putting in the mindset of putting your, your, your thoughts into action. Like this podcast. This is a prime example. This came from us talking about a year, about a few months ago, being like, hey, we should do a podcast to buying the stuff, <laughs> setting it up, th- you know, getting the sign, getting the soundboard, getting these couches, everything. And, you know, that's the difference in life. The difference is, in life is, is stop talking about it, be about it. Yeah. You know? I think people can really embody that because that doesn't just help you in one aspect of life. That helps you in all aspects of life. You can take that into your relationship, your business, whatever you do. I mean, you don't even have to run a business. It Mm -hmm. it can be anything. But, no, that's a great point because I think you've done a great job creating that culture too. I know you've dropped that line quite a bit in the past several (laughs) years because you can tell it really did hit you, though, when that came. Yeah. Once it finally set in, because like you said initially, you were kind of like, all right, that's... You know, it is what it is. Yeah. But a couple of years later for that line to still hit you and still be on your mind, yeah. obviously that's very powerful. You know, they say talent is rewarded, yeah. but execution is worshipped. Yeah. Because nine out of ten people will say, oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. I'm going to start this business. I'm going to lose this weight. <laughs> I'm gonna, my goal is this for this year. And then the next day, they put no action to anything they just said. Right, and uh, I gotta tell you a story. It's you'll get a kick out of it. And uh, so, this is it was this week. <laughs> just hit me. Yeah, and um, with the amount of hours we have to work mm-hmm. to be in this industry and to build what we're building and to be about the people, it takes an enormous amount of sacrifice and time away from your family and friends and kids and all that. And me and my my me and my wife are getting into it a little bit about just how. You know, it kind of distracts you, but it's kind of a gift and a curse, right? Because being able to have the mindset of, okay, I got to, I got to take action to it. I got to take action to it Mm -hmm. is it it sometimes it'll, it'll give you tunnel vision. It'll give you a little bit of tunnel vision and going full throttle every single day is smart, but, but, but just pulling back a little bit. To where you're not like, oh, these, I, 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 I. you're going to cause chaos around you. People are going to feel it. And you're not going to be realizing, oh, I could have done that a little smarter. I could have mm-hmm. still got the job done, still got the results done. But instead of going like 10 with the gas pedal, mm-hmm. like 8, I would have still got there in about the same amount of time. And, you know, she was like, talk to me about you know, and it's the balance, right? Like having a crazy mindset and always, you know, being about everybody around you is so beautiful. And it's, it's, it's what advocates in our world, no matter what you do, should do. But, you know, you can't lose sight of the people close to you at home. Yeah. Right. And having the ability to, to hit your head and be okay with it is how you get this action mindset. Mm -hmm. Because, once you've once you've taken action and keep doing it and realizing that you can do more of it, mm-hmm. it starts to build a momentum in your life 
and then it just trickles on every little thing. And people that are looking for a quick fix or looking for, oh, if I do that or I go to that seminar or if I, if I pay for that coach, I'll really change my life around. I'll tell you right now, you won't. It takes time and it takes more and it takes the ability in your heart to go, everybody I believe, man, it doesn't matter how old you are, man or woman, or what you do for a living. I know deep down in our heart, I believe this as humans, that we all have a intense want mm -hmm. to do something special and to be a part of something special, right? Whether it's a special marriage and a special family, that's being a part of something special. Or maybe you want to have an incredible life-changing business, right? Anybody that wants that and you feel that, you got to go and do it. And the action takes place by day in and day out until it becomes a part of you. It's not just one day it clicks or one day, once I, once I meet the one, no, once you meet the one, <laughs> that's when the work is going to start. Yeah. Once you meet the one, man, I'll tell you, it's, once you fall, oh, I'm going to get in this line of work. Okay, talk to me in five years. Right. Okay, then we'll start talking. I want to know that you're going to stick it out. I want to know that you have the balls, you have the heart, and that you care about inside of that line of work what it takes. Then we'll talk. Yeah, you brought up a good point because I feel like there's always these people that are chasing the point A to point B. It's like once I get there, oh, it's coast time. It's easy. Yeah. But you're talking about how once you get there, that's when the work starts. Because you still have to implement all these things day after day after day. Yeah. It ties into the point you made on uh, not that long ago. It was, you said it best, but it was, if you're not growing, what are you doing? You're going backwards. And that's you can either go thing. forward or go backwards. That's it. There's yeah. no in the middle. Yeah. You never get to a point and just coast. Yep. Once you get there and you can speak. I mean, you're, you're taking business to the levels you never thought you did, but <laughs> does it just, did, have you ever just been in coast mode? Never. No. Which, you know, like I said, gift and a curse. And everybody that is maybe watching this or listening, that's like, wow, I feel what he's understanding. And I feel his stress and anxiety. But I also feel his, his passion and his joy and his happiness and the things he's doing. And it's because I'm taking action. It's because I'm waking up every day. I'm not like, oh, I did this and that should be good for now. Right. Nothing's good for now. Because tomorrow you don't know. And the tomorrow's not promise phrase, that's still a phrase sometimes I like. I'm like, whatever. Right. But still it's like, it's crazy because here's a good example. 12 years in the industry, I'm right now in front of you looking in your eyes, more dialed in and more excited and passionate than I've ever been in my whole career. That's crazy. And that's came from every day, every day, every month, every year being like, you know what? What else could I do? What more could I do? I'm feeling a little whatever. Go more. Put your foot forward. Put your mm -hmm. you, you screwed that up. Make it right. You're going to go grow over here and learn this loan program. Grow over here. And as you do that, that's, that's what life's all about. Same thing with marriages, man. Same thing with your health. You don't just run a few miles and then you have a six pack. <laughs> you got to keep running. You got to keep running. You got to keep going to the gym. And when people fall out, it's just because they're not doing the action steps. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yeah, that's the, that's the point you brought up. 12 years in the industry, more passionate than you've ever been. I feel like all we ever hear about is these people that I've been doing it for 10 years. I'm burnt out. I'm burnt out. I need a break. And you're 12 years in, just came back from a big trip, and you're like, <laughs> let's go. I've never been this dialed in. Yeah. That's crazy. That's yeah. crazy. And that's yeah. just come from day after day after day. Yep. You didn't just get to that point because you woke up one morning. No, <laughs> no. That's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. Sacrifice breeds passion. That's incredible. That's All good. This. That's good. That's the podcast.